Good morning, everyone. I'm out here in my happy place, the, uh, the wash bay at my house. And uh, sitting next to me is the, uh, my complete Krenzla pressure washing solution, uh, which we're going to deep dive into today here today. Uh, part of the reason why I'm deep diving into it, uh, I, have, uh, I have 196 uh, currently, 196 paid and waiting orders. Today's June 3rd. Uh, and so I'm making this for you guys that are uh, impatiently, hopefully patiently, I'm impatiently waiting for, for these to come in. Uh, but uh, I'm going to make this video deep dive into it to hopefully keep you, uh, uh, keep you excited about it because these things are hard to get, you know, and they've been hard to get from the beginning uh, since I started uh, representing and selling these, these, these pressure washers. Now, of course, there are lots of copiers that are, you know, and now all of a sudden it's the, it's the pressure washer that everybody should know about, uh, which I guess is, a, you know, a good thing uh, because this is really a great, uh, a great pump and a, and a great product. So we've gotten to the point where uh, this is a lot like a, a I, I, I think of this a lot like a GT3, both in performance, in quality, in country of origin, and now in scarcity, right? So this was a rather obscure product uh, that was used uh, primarily commercially. You know, it's a commercial grade pump, commercial grade product. You know, Krenzel's claim to fame is that uh, you could run this pump dry for, for 15 minutes at a time. You shouldn't, but if you did, most pumps would be grenaded and ruined. Uh, this pump uh, is, is built like a tank, you know, so it's designed and over-engineered. Uh, for commercial applications, commercial use to use for hours and hours and hours on end. Of course, we're adapting it to cleaning your deck or in most cases, uh, cleaning your car. And so it's far overbuilt for that, for that, that, you know, for that, uh, you know, use. Uh, same thing like my GT3 RS, I'm driving it around town here in the villages, Florida, <laughs> certainly unnecessary. Uh, and also it was extremely difficult for me to get uh, and we're finding now that there is a significant demand for this high quality product that we're now adapting to washing cars. Same issue uh, is you know, sourcing products and so, or sourcing the products or the parts necessary to, to build this thing. So just to start digging into this, the, the, the K1152 is the European version. It's a 220 volt version. That one has a higher flow capability. Uh, the specs that matter on a pressure washer uh, for washing cars would be PSI or pounds per square inch, or it would be bar in, you know, in some, some of the countries that, that use a, a different standard. But here in the US, we're talking about uh, PSI. Uh, that's one spec, but the more important spec is flow, you know, gallons per minute output. So the, the original 1150, or 1152 TST, uh, the original version uh, on the same level of amperage, you're going to get more flow, more output from, from, the, from the pump. So in the U.S., part of the reason why I'm dealing with, uh, with supply issues, in the U.S. we need a different capacitor. Uh, we need different winding windings for the you know for the electric motor. Uh, we also need a UL capable power cord. So all these products have to be sourced. Uh, and we went from selling, uh, or uh, I guess it wasn't we at the time. They went from selling maybe a containers full of pressure washers to now we're selling a container and a half every month. Uh, and it's really incredible uh, to 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 take a product that. When I originally decided to do this, everyone, including the companies, not maybe not Krenzla as much, but uh, including the, you know, any company that I had talked to about becoming a dealer, nobody believed it. No one thought that it, this would sell. Uh, no one thought that anyone would want a $1,600, $1,575 package uh, to wash your car with. Uh, but uh, I guess I've proven them wrong because I'm you know, well over a thousand of these sold you know, in the last uh, roughly 14, 15 months I've been doing this. So 1152 is the 220 volt version. This is, of course, the 1122. Uh, 1122 uh, is, the, is the US version. When you get this, it actually comes in a box that says 1152 TST on the, on the front of it. So essentially what has to happen, Krenzla USA is the sole US importer of the product. Uh, they, they bring it into Baltimore County, you know, so it comes into port there. Uh, so they bring in containers of the product. Uh, but what Krenzla USA does for us 
is that they source the components necessary. Uh, I believe, I might be making this up, but I believe the UL approved power cord, the GFCI power cord, is sourced, I think it's out of Ecuador. And so think about the logistics of all of this and that, you know, Krenzler has to source the 120 volt version. We're the only, I believe, the only country that receives this machine that has 120 volt componentry. Uh, so we would have the capacitor difference, the windings, the winding difference for the electric motor. The power cord, of course, has to be sourced and sent, you know, to, to, to Germany. So it has to get through customs. So we have a, a basically a logistics nightmare combined with the fact that we went from selling a couple of these to hundreds of them and so imagine the you know the supply demand change right imagine the difficulty of getting this done and getting these getting these produced so 1122 uh, is is 1400 psi and 2.1 gallons per minute and we'll talk more about that here in a minute uh, the tst part and this is the the real differentiator uh, for for this pump versus or this version of the pressure washer versus say the 2020t or the 2017t i know some of you go online you start looking and saying well i'd like to have more pressure uh, the disadvantage to those it's the same pump it's the same setup the same motor it's just the diverter change uh, there's some internal differences on how the water comes out so in order to gain more pressure you lose flow right so there's a hole and if the hole gets smaller we get more pressure the problem with the smaller hole is then we have less water flowing through it you know it's a it's a trade-off it's give and take the more flow generally and at least when all conditions are the same when you have the same pump the same amount of power coming out of the wall uh, then then the more pressure the less flow and vice versa and this is my preference and I'm imparting my preferences on you I want to wash my car around 1150 to 1200 psi uh, and then you know 2.1 gallons per minute right and so so I want full flow now, I've never actually measured this uh, but I want full flow or as much flow as, as the machine is capable and then I'm going to uh, adjust the pressure right so this machine, this pump, this full flow 2.1 gallon per minute pump uh, has a couple of unique features over, over some of the other options. Um, first, it has, has this pressure switch on the front here. Uh, so the TS stands for total stop. And what that essentially means, and we're going to demonstrate this here in a minute, what that means is when you release the trigger, the pump turns off. When you pull the trigger, instant on. And that's really that's a real advantage to this thing. There's no ramp up. It's just bang on off on off on off depending on you know, if the trigger is pulled or not, right? So this this specific this pump has the total stop feature, which is what I've also sourced and asked them to produce on my you know, the OG version, the K1322 TS, uh, which is the shelf mount model. Go check out the videos on on that on that pump. Uh, but we basically have this, the, you know, this, this plastic box on the front of the pump, which makes it turn off and on, which is great for us washing cars, especially, you know, I'm on six acres and there isn't a house within 600 feet. Uh, but if you're in a neighborhood or you're working out of your garage, I don't think you want some, you know, blaring, uh, super loud um, um, gas you know, gas pump just sitting there running and running it. Especially, I know a lot of you, if you don't have the right, uh, or if the sun doesn't you know, ray, come up in the right spot of your house, you know, you need to get up early or do this really late. And so the beauty of this, and I'm gonna put a, set up a dB meter here in a minute, show you how loud this thing goes, but, or, or gets. But the total stop function combined with the electric motor makes this extremely quiet, extremely useful when washing your car. You don't have it sitting there idling and running, right? Um, and then the T, the TST, the T is for the, the, the hose reel, right? So it comes with a, a 15 meter, which is what, 49 feet and change, uh, quarter inch hose uh, that comes on the, on, on the Krenzler here. Um, I don't recommend changing this out. I know a lot of people get excited about, you know, the Cobra Jet hose, which is a three quarter or three eighths inch, uh, five eighths inch outside diameter, three eighths inch inside diameter hose, which is really nice. But I don't think it's necessary to change uh, this Krenzler hose as 
great. Um, not quite as pliable and, and uh, smooth operating as my, as my Cobra Jet hose, but I wouldn't recommend modifying it. I didn't modify mine. I wouldn't recommend it. It's difficult to get the right fittings to make this work anyway with, with specific hose reel. Um, they have a, you know, they, the, the connection they make here, it would be complicated to, uh, to take this off and put, or take this hose off and put another hose on. Plus, you wouldn't have enough room to wind up a, a reasonably a long hose, so so I would stick with this. Mine, this is the original version. Um, this mine looks a little beat up here because this is uh, about eight years old now, nine years old, uh, and so this connection here is a little smoother. There's a taper to it, uh, but the 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 end of the hose is uh, is a female M22. I probably have this torqued down. Yeah, I have it torqued on here. Uh, but what I send this with as part of the package is, is I send this with an M22 to 3 8 inch conversion. Uh, in the future, I'm probably, probably three or four months away, but I'm having manufactured a, a specific stainless 3 8 to M22, so we'll be able to eliminate this brass plug. Um, the connection on the hose is brass. To get a stainless uh, twist and seal plug, uh, so to get this part that I have in brass, uh, is like 20 something dollars. I don't think it's worth it it's considering we're connecting to brass anyway. But what I do think is worth it is I like stainless couplers better. They tend to last longer. Um, they, they don't get all corroded or they don't, they don't tend to um, corrode like you can even see the brass here has started to start to get dull. Uh, the stainless stays nice and clean. But I will mention any of these quick disconnects, uh, they're, they're a consumable. Right, so this is a product that, if I were you, I would have a few of them sitting around. You know, maybe maybe have one extra of each of these fittings. Uh, this is like these are like tires in your car. These aren't warranty for life. I've seen some of them fail in in months. Some of them, some of them like this one I've had on here since the beginning. Right, so it just depends. Depends on you know, I don't know your luck. Just like some people get a nail in their tire uh, and have warranty issues with their motor, uh, it's just it's luck of the draw. Inside of here is a rubber grommet. So if you ever knew, notice that you connect your your gun, so if you take your gun, you connect it up, and the telltale is that there's lots of wobble, uh, then you may have lost your grommet, or if it's shooting out the side, or your pump is surging, you very well may have lost your grommet, uh, and that that can happen. Uh, in the future, uh, I'll have a whole suite of, um, of, of, of parts and fittings and pieces uh, for the store that people can purchase and have as backups. Uh, it's been difficult dealing with so many different models and things in the beginning. Um, but again, I would probably, if I were you, I'd buy an extra coupler and a couple of extra fittings so that, so that you have them. I only have them in my cabinet, so I've only had it happen once, but I lost my grommet. It shot out, shot into the bushes somewhere. I couldn't find it, and, uh, and, and, and I was leaking. So, so that's something to, to, to take note of. So the reason why, and I know there are lots of brass M22 to, to 3 8 inch couplers, uh, but nobody makes a M22 1.5 millimeter by 14 millimeter opening is the size of this. No one makes a really high quality uh, stainless version. Uh, there are actually, there's a company out of New Zealand that makes a, what's called a straight through, which is a, 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 bit, a little bit bigger bore version of these. Uh, this is a $9 coupler. Um, theirs is like a $46 coupler. Uh, so these I think are good enough. Uh, I haven't noticed because we're not, we're not attempting to get tons and tons of pressure out of this thing. Um, we're actually going to dumb the pressure down a little bit. Uh, I, and I haven't noticed any flow issues with, with using these quick disconnects. I think we're okay to use these because we're washing cars. Uh, I'm not trying to get the maximum output out of this. I, you know, I want a certain amount of pressure. Uh, and quick disconnects for us, discerning car guys, I want to break this $1,500, $1,600 pressure washer down and put it in the cabinet. I don't want to leave it out. You know, I don't want to leave everything connected. I want to get the water out of it and I want to take good care of it, right? So M22 comes with this adapter um, and, and this is you know, the, the, the hose that, 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 uh, that this bolts to. You want to make sure. I wouldn't torque it too tightly. Um, you probably don't need to have these Teflon taped. You certainly don't on an M22 connection. Uh, I tape them anyway just because. You know, why not? It can't, certainly can't hurt because uh, I don't want leaking. Also, if you have leaking, you'll, you'll tend to have the, the pump surging, right? 
So on my gun inlet, uh, and this is the Mosmatic, this is a Sutner made, Mos, uh, sourced by Mosmatic gun with the Mosmatic uh, integrated swivel. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a second, but I sell this as part of the package. It comes pre-torqued, so I, I send it with a, a twist and seal plug. This shouldn't ever go bad, so you really don't need another one of these. Um, these, these this 3 8 inch uh, male uh, cup uh, a plug uh, this should stay and work well forever now I do get lots of questions notice there is a little play in this right people get all bent all worked up like, oh my gosh there's play I don't think it's supposed to be there it is it'll also cinch down a little bit when you when you end up with uh, with with pressure so when this is under pressure and loaded uh, this won't uh, won't swivel as much mine seems to be pretty tight some of them will have a little bit more play I mean these are sourced by MTM but they're Chinese stainless fittings so they're not again this is a nine dollar coupler and a three dollar plug they're not you know these aren't precision instruments uh, so notice there is a little bit of play in the in the connection that's normal that's okay so one of the key advantages to this package and one of the, one of the reasons why I ended up with this gun um, is that uh, I, I bought um, a Mosmatic swivel, a DGV swivel, a live swivel for my, uh, for my Mosmatic boom pole. And I'm like, wow, this is incredible. And so I was using an MTM SG28 at the time, which is the standard you know, $25 MTM gun. Uh, and I had bought one of those Mosmatic swivels, which is about as big as this connection here, right? And so we had the plug coming out and then I put the coupler on the swivel. So we had a, you know, a four inch assembly of stuff Right. The, the MTM swivel was not as good, uh, not even close to as good as the, the Mosmatic swivel. I think the Mosmatic swivel cost like 70 bucks or something. I now see some people selling them on Amazon for 30 bucks. But they were nowhere to be found when I started doing this three, four years ago, three or four years ago, when I was looking to upgrade my, my original M407, MTM M407 gun to something better. And so I discovered the Mosmatic swivel saw that they had a swivel built, an integrated swivel in a gun that they had in their store, you know, from Mosmatic. But it was a catalog item deep in there. They have a 96, 97, maybe 98 page catalog. Uh, and so I'm flipping through the catalog and I see this gun. And so I started calling around trying to find one. No one ever even heard of it. No one, no, no one even knew what the model number was. So I finally got on the horn with Mosmatic. Uh, and I, I got them to source me one from, from Switzerland. They had none of them, so they must have had to order the Sutner gun, take and put the, you know, put the Mosmatic badge on the Sutner gun, right? And then uh, they put and installed their swivel into their integrated swivel. So Sutner makes them a, a little different handle for this. And, and I got the gun and fell in love. The trigger operation is ball bearing driven, whereas the trigger in the MTM, the MTM is a great gun I sell those as well but uh, the trigger operation on this is ball bearing driven whereas the um, the trigger on the on the MTM is a plastic um, there's a plastic interface or plastic connection it's just not it's not the same uh, and so I bought this hundred and ten dollar gun I think I paid a lot more from that because I had to get it you know, brought in and, uh, and, and God bless Mosmatic. I hope they don't get mad at me for saying this, but they try to talk me out of it. You know, Jamie, who's become a friend of mine, uh, Jamie and I didn't hit it off very well in the beginning. Um, I was just begging him, help me, help me, help me. Let me, let me sell this. No, no, no. And I'd say, let me sell this. No, no. And finally I was able to become a dealer. I ordered 15 of these. It ended up taking us six months to catch up. Fast forward to today, um, June 2nd or June 3rd of 2018, I'm ordering them two, three, four hundred at a time, and I still can't get them. So right now, as we speak, as I'm making this video, I have about 40 guns that I'm sending out to the remaining people that, uh, that, that, that are waiting for their pressure washer. So there's just been this constant battle, which stresses me out to no end of, there's so many people, there's so many more people that would buy it if I had it. Uh, but some of you have been so great to just order it and wait. Now, 
many of you get, you know, send me six emails a week about it, and, and I, I can appreciate that. Um, but, but trust me, I'm not sitting on guns. If I have them, uh, my dad goes in, and these all have to be torqued properly and assembled properly. Um, so just know that, you know, these do take some work to send it to you. Um, I know the vast majority of us have tools, but there are some of us that are buying this a good percentage, probably 25 or 30 percent, where if I send them something and say, hey, you know, swap out the coupler, they just, they just are incapable of doing that. And God bless them. They're probably really good at something else. Um, and so I want to send this complete because of that to save you the energy. Many of you could easily put this together, but there's, again, a, a decent percentage of the population that, that can't do that. So Sutner gun, $110, you know, I'm just going to call it a Mosmatic gun. Uh, we're probably three or four months away. At the same time, I'm having this new coupler built. Uh, which the coupler is going to be quite a bit more expensive than this combination. It's probably going to be a thirty or forty dollar coupler um, that that connects direct to the to the hose. Um, but we're going to be eliminating this bulk that having to have this plug and the swivel. The the plug will be integrated into the swivel. The swivel will actually be integrated up into the handle of the gun. Uh, so we're going to lose another roughly inch and a half or so of this bulk. It's going to be really smooth, really clean. Um, that again is three or four months away. Um, I've signed off on the drawings. I'm waiting for the prototypes. When I say three or four months, that probably means it's more like six months. Those of you who end up with this, I'm telling you there's going to be a significant aftermarket for it. So if, I wouldn't wait for the new one because it could be, who knows, it could take me a year. Um, so I, I'm just giving you my you know, honest feedback here. I wouldn't wait for it. You'll easily be able to sell this assembly if you want to. I mean, there'll be tons of people that will be willing to buy it. You, know, you might sell it at a discount, but if you absolutely have to have the newest and best, um, you'll be able to, to sell this no problem, like I said. I'm thinking about creating a, a buyback program. As I build more infrastructure, when I get bored, uh, I'm going to think about a buyback program because I know that you guys that watch these videos are going to take care of your stuff. And so let's say I sell this to you for $275, I buy it back for $150, bucks, I sell it for $200, you know, I can make profit on both sides of it, get to sell you the new product. I don't know if something like that has been spinning in my mind that um, to create some sort of buyback program. And, but I have, again, I have, there's significant infrastructure to have to set up to do that. Uh, because again, I think that us obsessed garage types are ones that will take, largely will take really good care of their stuff and, and would be someone I would want to buy it back from, you know, and so make some sort of upgrade program, right, for this. So then we, we go to a, th uh, a quarter inch. We're gonna take our 3 8 our M22 convert to 3 8 and then we're coming quarter inch out. And the reason why we do quarter, a lot of the different fittings, uh, quarter just works better from gun out. Right, and again, I'm not super worried about the, about restricting flow. Quarter inch is more than enough uh, for for flowing the, the pressures and and and, uh, and uh, gallons per minute flow rates that we're looking to accomplish. So, we have a quarter inch male, right? So a quarter inch male uh, to to a quarter inch coupler, right? And this is also an MTM. Uh, this is a six dollar part. Uh, this is the one where the O-ring will probably go bad first because you're constantly swapping. Um, these are in massive short supply as well, uh, so don't panic if you ever get something. With all of these, these swivels, if I ever send anything that doesn't say MTM on it, don't panic. I've sourced something that is just as good or better in some instances. Sometimes I've got to pay uh, and buy them and source these parts when I can't get them, right? Same thing with this. With the, with the fitting here, the, the 4.0 orifice nozzle, the MTM, again, these are, I love MTM to death, you know, they're, they're foam cannons and all that stuff. But, you know, these parts, they just do a good job of sourcing them to their spec from, you know, they're, they're Chinese made. Same thing with these, you know, with these stainless um, nozzles. Now, they're much better than what you see from like Dushin or some of these other, you know, Chinese knockoffs. Um, at least these are built to spec. Um, but if you ever get one of these that says general pump on it, that would be you know, an equivalent. I will only ever send you equivalent, and the only reason I never do that is if we had, like I would never do that with the gun, uh, but the only reason I never do that is if we can't get it. Um, for instance, these are three months or two months out, I think, so it's just, just causing me all kinds of heartburn. And, it's just, you know, it's this never-ending battle to source this stuff. So I could have guns, pressure washers. We can't use it without the gosh darn quarter-inch quick disconnect, right? 
So we come out quarter, the new gun is going to have an equal thread the new gun will not be stainless internals like I've talked about in the video. We will have stainless bolts or screws, so that, that will be a change. I decided not to do stainless internals. That would have caused and had, had, we'd have had to have a complete redesign. That would have made this gun cost 250 plus. Uh, and so I'm thinking the gun's probably gonna be about the same price, uh, but what we'll have is we're gonna have a much more stout equal threaded connection so we don't end up with this poking out of these NPT threads. So we're going to have equal NPT threads and so it'll fit all the way in and we'll have a, an even more stout or robust quarter inch coupler. And we have our Mosmatic wand, right, which has a, this is a quarter inch uh, plug on the end of it. Uh, the, again, this probably will never go bad. I guess it could crack because we torque these pretty tightly to make sure they don't leak. But this is another, this is a part you're going to probably want to have one or two sitting around um, just as, as a precaution in case you ever need to swap it out of a bearing veil or something like that. But the idea here is to be able to swap from wand, and this is a 20 inch full stainless uh, Mosmatic bent wand, or you could have your quarter inch quick disconnected nozzle on the end, or finally, you would have, which is also included in the kit, you would have your MTM PF22 foam cannon, and that also quick disconnects on the end of the short gun here. So you have a short array rather than, I always see all these Instagram photos of people with the darn, with the darn thing, if you're 30 inches off the end of the, off the end of the, the, the gun, I, I don't know, I, I, want it, I want it right on the end so I can control it. It's just I can have it right here rather than trying to reach out to adjust it. So I want it, I want it right there, right, right next to me. So I send this foam cannon with a, with a standard 1.25 millimeter orifice, right? And so let's talk about the foam cannon here for, for a second. So when I run this, and I'm gonna demonstrate it, I run this wide open all the way to the plus side, right? I'm gonna put about 150, 100 to 150 mLs of soap, depending on what kind of soap you're using. I use Adam's soap in here, right? I, want, I run the, flan, the fan vertically, right? So I run it full. We have a quarter inch. I swap out and do a quarter inch a stainless uh, MTM plug, and this should never really go bad. Um, but I run this, this machine through you know, the end of the gun or this, this foam cannon through the end of the gun like so at wide open. Now, it's become, you know, now everybody, for, for whatever reason, now everybody knows about these, but inside of here is a hole, right? So there's a hole that shoots through, right? And then it pulls, pulls you know, soap from, and from the inside and, and foams it. But there's a hole, and the hole size of this is 1.25 millimeters. They also sell a 1.5 millimeter. They also sell a 1.1 millimeter. So this machine will run on a 15 amp circuit when you're reusing just the gun and the nozzle. But what will happen is, I like to use the standard 1.25 millimeter orifice on this. It'll cause this machine to run, you know, it'll, it'll kick the breaker on your, your 15 amp circuit. Uh, even if it's dedicated, it'll probably kick it, just depending on how old your home is and how good your power supply is. Uh, so a couple of fixes could be, if, you're, if, you're, if you don't have access to a 20 amp circuit, is we could upgrade this to a 1.5 millimeter orifice. Think about it, if the hole is bigger, you know, you're squeezing less water through it, and so then theoretically your foam isn't going to be as thick. Uh, so I like to use this standard. I send this standard. We do have some 1.5 millimeter orifices if you need to buy it. I would suggest trying it at your house. Uh, get, it, get this on a dedicated 20 amp circuit and you won't have any issues. You know, you'll hear the pump working. Uh, I've been using it for eight and a half years or how many years now with it than this current setup and it's bulletproof. Uh, but in order to get the best foam I found, I use 150 mLs of Adam's Car Shampoo put it in the bottle, fill the bottle up three quarters of the way, mix it around. I run this wide open all the way positive uh, with a 1.25 millimeter orifice on a dedicated 20 amp circuit and you're good to go, right? Another thing to, that um, uh, this happens all the time, I know it, but people, when this fills up with water, it gets a little heavier and we have plastic threads on metal, right? And so you've got to, you know, you, and it doesn't thread in, you know, perfectly. So you've got to, you know, don't use any pressure. So I have people saying, oh, my bottle's damaged. I've never ever, I've sold thousands of these. I've never once seen a, a damaged bottle. Uh, and so I, 
guarantee you it you know you just didn't do it right you know you didn't thread it in there right you know so take care to do that it really sucks for me to have to eat the cost of a bottle because you didn't thread it right so so don't do that if you're going to do that then buy yourself a few extra bottles they're like 15 bucks a piece this is my original pf22 uh, so I don't see why you would need to uh, need to have other bottles. Um, you, this also you can usually thread on other, you know, like car pro bottles and stuff fit on that as well. So the wand, Mosmatic wand, quarter inch. Uh, good luck trying to buy this elsewhere. Uh, you'll probably screw it up. Uh, this there are. 175, maybe 200 different variants of how you can order this wand in different lengths. It, it might even be 500 combinations. The hardest part is getting the right size here, the right nozzle. Uh, the other hard part is that this nozzle protector has to be pulled back past the nut here. You have to yank it back here in order to get the quick disconnect on to torque it. And that's a really difficult thing to do. Uh, and so my dad has become really, really efficient at that. He actually boils these so they, so they soften up and then he can pull it back. He lubricates with a little soap he, so he can pull it back, torque the quick disconnect on the end, uh, and then you know, he pulls it back in place and sends it like this. So this has a 20 degree bend. It's a 20 inch wand, which I think is perfect for washing cars, even my big truck. Right, maybe in the future for you RV guys, I'm going to start to offer a straight, longer version. But again, I can't. I, I can't have it all. Right? I, it, I've got to. Got to take this one step at a time. And then we get, and this is where it gets a little complicated. We get a. We have to. We have to adjust the output. I send this with a 40 degree, so a single nozzle. If you want, you can go buy, a, and I'll probably have this again. Another thing I like to add to the store is the 25 and the other, you know, the zero degree uh, options. Uh, but this nozzle is sized specifically, and you can always tell the size because it says it on the on the. Uh, it's always engraved or laser cut or etched into the quick disconnect here. But it says 40040, and the 40 at the end is the size, right? So 40 degree and then 040 is the, is the, is the size of the, of, the, of the orifice, which is a 4.0. And the reason why we choose, I choose 4.0, it has to do with flow. So 2.1 gallons per minute, 1400 PSI at standard flow, at one-to-one -one flow. I'm gonna dumb that down a little bit. So when I put a 4.0 nozzle, 2.1 gallons per minute, that should bring us to, to 1150 PSI, uh, which I think is perfect pressure for washing the car. You never wanna mess with this. And I get people all the time saying, I'm not getting, a, I'm not getting the pressure that I need. Uh, and so this needs to be turned all the way in tight, right? So that way I have maximum pressure. This is called the unloader valve. When you unload or divert pressure inside of the pump, you in essence add heat, right? And so you, you know, and again, I'm not an expert in this. I've never been trained on these. This is just what I know. So don't take this as gospel. When you adjust pressure via the unloader, you're causing the pump to work a little harder. So instead, we're not gonna adjust pressure from the unloader, we're gonna leave that alone. It comes wide open, so don't mess with it. If you mess with it, then you're gonna call me and say, I don't know why my pressure washer's not working. It won't cause it to break, but you'll forget that you messed with it. It happens all the time. And you look and you say, I'm only getting like 100 PSI or 200 PSI. I say, well, did, did you mess with the red knob? No, no, I didn't, I didn't touch it. Uh, I said, well, go turn the red knob all the way clockwise in. Oh, okay, it's fixed. <laughs> I can't tell you, it happens once a week, right? So don't mess with the unloader valve. You don't mean to need to mess with that. So here's the, you know, the combination. We have the gun, the wand. I told you this is gonna be a deep dive video. We have it all set up, ready to go to swap from part to part, piece to piece, right? So this comes supplied as so. I generally take and put it in here and we're, we're good. The pump also comes with, and I'm working on this, maybe someday I'd like to, I'd like to be able to offer this without a gun and wand because the Krenzla OE guns, they're good for washing your deck and things like that, but you'll find that you'll probably never use it. Because we have a 3 8 inch connection, I do have this where you can add QDs. It's the drop down where you can add quick disconnects 
for the Krenzler OE wand and gun, right? And so that's what that piece, that four, there's a four piece kit that if you, have, if you buy the whole package, you can add in the four piece kit. I think it's 25 bucks uh, and you get all of the three eighths inch connections you'll need to make the Krenzler OE gun work. I'm telling you, unless you're gonna use this around the house a lot, if you're just washing your car, you'll never use those. So I wouldn't even waste it. You're just gonna punt those in the, put those in the attic and you're gonna be hard pressed to throw them away because they are really nice. Um, but uh, at some day, I'd like to see if I can buy these without that um, because uh, Krenzler's been reluctant to do that because they, you know, they believe in their gun. And I said, well, I'm, I'm, I'm explaining to them, look, I, I know I'm modifying this. Germans don't like it when you modify stuff. Um, I get that. They've spent their blood, sweat, and tears on this thing. Same thing with Porsche. They don't like you messing with their exhaust. I, I get that. But um, I want this to work a specific way for washing cars. So for now, uh, the 1122 TST comes with the gun wand. When you get this in the mail, um, the gun, the inlet hose, I'm going to talk about it in a second, the foam can and all the quick disconnects, they come from me. Uh, as of the, right now, this video comes from my dad uh, in Pennsylvania, which will be coming from OGHQ here at the end of the month uh, because we're moving operations down here. Um, so you get one package from me with all the supporting stuff. You get two packages from Krenzla. We've decided to take the Krenzla wand, wands and guns out of the packaging because it would crack, at times crack our enclosure. And so it comes in three packages, one from Pennsylvania, two from Baltimore. Uh, if you do see that, uh, that you know, sometimes you, we, we, it shows fulfilled, I have, uh, there's a, a difficulty I have with, the, uh, with my system uh, on Shopify. And that since this is packaged, but it's not really packaged, I'm packaging it myself. Uh, when you see shipping, um, you'll get separate tracking for the Krenzel pump from the, from the main, main stuff. Maybe someday it'll change when I have this all in-house. I'll be, uh, I, you know, maybe someday I'll be buying, you know, containers of these myself from, from Krenzel USA. So um, other things to mention, we'll talk about the inlet hose here in a second. The, the power cord looks a little different, I think, on the new ones, but uh, very similar. Uh, it's a TRC. Uh, these are, you know, a high-end GFCI sourced three-pronged uh, plug. It'll fit in a 20 amp circuit or a 15 amp you know, traditional circuit. I would recommend uh, plugging into a 20 amp. Uh, you, you know, once you plug it in, you'll be able to press the button to turn it on. Uh, and then our on-off switch is right here, which I'll show you operation as well. So if it's not working, always check your GFCI. Check your GFCI on the wall. Check this, check your breaker. Most of the time this won't trip. The pump has an internal circuit circuitry which will, if it's not getting the right amount of power, it'll kick off. That's how you'll know that you don't have enough power, especially with the foam cannon. Uh, this won't trip, your breaker won't trip, but the pump will go into protection. That's when you know, call your electrician, get a 20 amp circuit, you're gonna need it. If you don't have the capability to do that, I have a 15 amp only and you're willing to give up a little bit of foaming capability, then give me a shout and I'll get you the, it's like 15 bucks for a 1.5 millimeter orifice. You can swap it out in your gun or in your foam cannon. Someday again, I'd like to have 1.1 millimeter orifice, 1.25, 1.5 prefab built uh, and ready to ship. Again, I've got a pick and choose here as I'm, as I'm building out this, this destination. So that's, that's our power cord. It wraps up on the side here. Uh, last thing to mention on, on accessory parts would be, uh, let me take this off, I have an extra one here, is inlet hose. And I've battled this for a while. I think I finally have it licked. Uh, so this is a Goodyear 5 8 inch, very stout rubber hose, industrial grade. I've got these pressed fittings on the end, uh, and then we put, uh, we put brass MTM uh, quick disconnects. I don't think it makes sense to do stainless here. It wouldn't match uh, because we have brass inlet, brass, you know, and then brass on the hose. Nobody makes a stainless connection like this. Stainless is really designed for high pressure, uh, and we're not, you know, we're not dealing with high pressures. I like stainless on the other end um, because these tend to get corroded. And so what we have, what we send, we send with a coupler on the end, and then when you get it, you'll actually have a coupler here, and then this plug, the plug will come. So you'll be like, how does this work? Take one of the plugs, put it on the inlet of the, of the pressure washer, take the other coupler, put it on your hose bib, and then you're good to go, right? So then we can take and quick disconnect our inlet hose. I sell these in six and a half, 12 and 20 feet. Yes, this is another thing someday I'd like to be able to offer custom sizes, right? 
20, you know, two feet. 30 feet, you know, 100 feet. I'm going to be offering a garden hose version of this at some point. I don't have it yet. I don't have the capability yet, uh, but this is all coming. These are all, you know, swirling around in my head and why I woke up at 3 a.m. this morning um, thinking about making this video, right? So there's our inlet hose. We'll show you how this, how this all works here in a second. I think that's about it. Uh, what you'll notice on the and we'll show this in a little bit. Uh, another thing to note, the, there, this is an oil gauge, right? So you'll get this and you'll panic. You're like, oh my gosh, there's water in there. My gauge is ruined. No, that's oil. It's supposed to be in there and there should be an air bubble uh, that, that shows you know, how, how this thing works. Uh, the oil needs to be changed at 50 hours. Um, I'm not gonna lie, mine, I didn't change it. I shouldn't didn't change it for the first seven years. I did have, there's a video, I'll put it up in the, uh, up in the, uh, the cards here uh, of how to change the oil. Uh, I still, I mangled my dipstick. I still need to get a new one, um, but uh, you want to use some sort of softer mechanism to turn this. I, I think it calls for 5W50. I think I put 5W40 in it. Uh, so you want uh, 5W50 in this. Uh, you put AMS oil in it. Uh, and uh, so you drain it once at 50 hours and that's all I recommend. I might recommend changing it every, you know, after that every you know, two or three years, something like that. Never use it upright. Uh, they don't have an oil pump. Uh, and so the oiling, in order to get proper oiling, this pump needs to be laid on its side, like so, right? So you have to lay it down like this for operation. Uh, this is part of the reason why I've been so you know, adamant about creating a custom mounted solution. Since I have to lay it on the side anyway, why not, you know, if you're really willing to go the extra mile and spend the extra money, let's take this pump and let's have a really clean looking one and put it on a shelf. Uh, so that is that is something that uh, is, is also available to you as well. This is nice if you're not willing to go or you don't have power or water or the capability to do that. So anyway, let's go out and demonstrate this. I want to uh, hook up a decibel meter and see how loud it gets to give you an idea. It always sounds louder on camera with my microphone. Uh, I told you I was going to dive deep into this thing. Another suggestion I would make on these from now until for, forever, I think, this is going to continue to be hard to get. The reason it's hard to get is it's really, really good. Uh, the other reason it's hard to get is I've been talking about this at nauseum and now I have this massive uh, uh, grouping or massive community of obsessed garage people that are out teaching everybody they know about this thing. Uh, and so other, and other suppliers are starting to catch up on and copy the, the solution and all of this stuff. Um, and so there's more and more and more interest. People are realizing that there's $200 pressure washers and then there's this and there's nothing in between. I've scoured the earth to try to find something that's six, 700 bucks that's decent. It, I don't wanna say it can't be done. It can't be done with this pump, you know? So uh, it's not gonna be done with, with, with this grade or this quality of pump. Uh, and then what happens is if we downgrade the pump grade, we probably download the flow, and then we end up with something that doesn't work. Although what we could do is just lie about the flow and just make it up. I'm not gonna do that. So other thing, I, I'm not interested in selling the low-end pressure washers because they're going to break all the time. Where I feel confident in this, we'll still have issues with this. There's no quite. It's a, it's a man-made machine. The other thing that, that I'll mention, if you ever have service-related issues, in the top right corner of Krenzler USA, there's a dealer tab. Um, you can click that. There are lots of service centers that would love to be able to service these because people, you know, service centers love working on these. Krenza covers warranty parts and labor for a year. Uh, and so, so you, a lot of times you can find someone locally rather than having to try to send this 80 pound machine back to Krenzla. You know, if you, for some reason, should have an issue. Mine, eight and a half years old, no issues, but doesn't mean it can't happen. You know, it's very rare that it does, uh, but doesn't mean it can't happen. So let me get set up here and uh, let's go out and use it. Gosh, this thing weighs a ton. <laughs> yeah, shoot. A couple of things to note when you get your pump, especially when you, you know you guys that are waiting that are going to get it new here in the next couple of couple of weeks. Hopefully, a couple of days. But um, if you ever get a leak, it's usually going to come from this here. So in shipping, a lot of times. Uh, you'll want to, this, this, these two connections here, you might have a little drip, so if the pump is surging or you get any leaking, it's generally from this. A lot of times in shipping, this, this gets jarred or loosened, so all you have to do is loosen it, 
and it'll reseat and you know, tighten it down or it'll be good. Same thing with your gauge. If your gauge ever stops working, a lot of times if you just untwist it, you know, well, there's a, you know, they put, put a wrench on the end, untwist it, re reconnect it, of course, disconnect everything, turn the power off, and then put it back on. A lot of times that'll, that'll cause it to, to, to fix. Other than that, there really isn't much that goes wrong with these things. They're pretty darn bulletproof. All right, so let me get mine set up here. I have a powered connection on the side wall. All right, so I would take my pump. I'm going to lay it down on its side. I'm going to take my hose, pull it out. You can see why when you deal with any kind of high pressure hose, you can see why having a swivel is so necessary. I'm going to make sure I'm going to get all the kinks out of it. I haven't unwound this thing, it's so long. Look up your gun and wand before we turn the water on. All right, so we've got that ready to go. Again, don't mess with the unloader valve. Now, this is one of those things that I wish they'd change in the world. This is how high hose bibs should be. There's no reason to put it down low. But, so if you're building a house, my suggestion would be to build it so that it's up higher. Now, I'm cheating here. I've got the stainless connection, which you won't have. Look at this bucket filler, man, it's so sick. I know a lot of people on Instagram were talking about how they like the black better, but I'm telling you, this is like, if you get this in the mail, you're gonna wanna oh, just play with it for like, I just carried it around the house for like a week. All right, so we take our inlet hose. Again, you can get longer if you need it. This is a stainless, but it should be the same. Yep, it should be the same connection. And we're gonna come in here, quick disconnected. Let me get you a little closer view of that. See what I'm saying? Nice. Quick, so we have a plug, so you'll put your plug. So when you get the, the pump for me, this isn't this isn't in because so this comes separately. So you just want to screw in your plug into the, the inlet here. You don't need Teflon tape. You could put it on if you needed if you wanted to. And then we go and just and attach our garden hose connection, right? With our inlet hose. Now again, you can get this in six and a half, twelve, or twenty feet. So theoretically, we should be good. Check to make sure our connections are good. Okay, so now before we turn our pump on, I'm gonna turn the water on. Let's turn the water, make sure nothing leaks. I might need to torque that a little bit more. I hadn't used this hose yet, so I never torqued this, but it's as simple as get some channel locks. I do it by hand. You don't wanna to torque it down so much that, because there's a rubber O-ring in here. So you don't want to torque it so that it damages that. There we go, perfect. Okay, so now we turn our pump on. What'll happen is it'll pressurize and then turn off. So that's about it. If you get some pulsing, then something's wrong. You know, there's either a leak somewhere in your gun and wand, which shouldn't be, but you know, but possible, or you know something, you know something happening here, or like I said, this little connection here. If there's a little drip, you know, your pump will surge on and off. But that you know that should be should be it. Your gauge is going to read zero. Let me show you the bubble I was talking about here that you should have, which is the way it's supposed to be. See the air bubble right here. There's a little air bubble inside of the, the gauge. So now as soon as I pull the trigger, you're gonna notice the gauge goes up. Gotta run all the air out of the lines. So your gauge is going to read 1400 PSI, but with our orifice nozzle, you know, our 4.0 orifice nozzle, we're going to be, we're going to, it's going to be running, you know, again, the, the actual pressure on the outlet is going to be closer to, to 1100. So take notice what happens. So this is one of your little troubleshooting techniques. So here's what happens to, if you mess with the unloader valve. So now I'm running the pump. As I unload the pressure, the pressure is going to fall. 
And notice the pump changes the sound it makes. And so I can run it all the way down to darn near zero. And so, again, I get phone calls all the time, like, I don't know why it's not working, I'm only getting 500 PSI. Well, it's because you mess with the unloader valve. So there we go, full flow. Again, clockwise, turn it all the way in so it's tight. That's where you want it to be. Look at that. On, off. On, off. Amazing. All right, let's get a let's get a, a dB meeting or meter reading on to see how loud this thing is. Let's take a reading from the center of the pump. I want to stand back. Let's go 10 feet. So I'm going to stand right here. Uh, let's go nine feet. So I'm going to stand right on the crack. So at nine feet, I'm going to turn the pump on. You know, Mike is on me. Uh, but I'm gonna, you know, the mic is a little deceiving on how loud this thing is. It's a lot quieter than you think. Ambient noise is right around, you know, my speaking voice right here is what, 56, 58 decibels, 60 decibels. Just ambient noise is around 40. So at nine feet, we're at 77 and a half decibels. At 10 feet, yeah, same thing, 76 and a half dB. Right up next to the machine. We're at 78, 79 dB, 80 dB right up next to it. Yeah, 75, 76 and a half. Most of that is actually the pressure washer. So actually, how can I do this? Or most of it is the water coming out. If we think about this, so most of it is that. So yeah, if you get away from the water, 69, 70 decibels at 10 feet. Not bad. All right, so one of the best parts about this, you know, this package is the ability to be able to swap from wand the side to short gun so when I'm cleaning my wheels I'm able to get up in here rather than having to try to use a giant wand and so another you know another test for washing your car is if I can take and keep my hand about, you know, about 12 inches away from the, to the tip, you know, having the 40 degree nozzle combined with you know, us dumbing the pressure down a little bit really makes it work well. It's right at the edge of cutting, right, right at the edge of hurting, right, which is where you want it. So that means if it's not hurting my skin, it's not going to hurt my paint. Right? So that's, that's always been my, my test or my metric of what I what I think you know should be done. Now shoot, when I told you I was gonna do a deep dive, I wasn't messing with you. <laughs> this is gonna be a long video. I'm telling you the difference, especially those of you who may be upgrading from some lesser expensive, you know, lower flowing pump. You know, anything that's two or three hundred dollars or less, you know, they're gonna be rated at you know one point 0.75 or 1.69 gallons per minute. There's no way that they're putting out that much that much flow. I mean, I'm generally not a skeptic, but another thing that's on my agenda here coming up in the future is I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna buy one of pretty much every cheap pressure washer I can get my hands on, and I'm gonna create a supportive package for each one. Of them. I know I have some packaging for them, but it. Without having it here, you know, having it in my possession, being able to test it, vet it, and it's kind of hard. But again, I'm never going to sell, I don't think, I don't want to say never, but I don't think I'm going to sell the pressure washers. What I'm going to do is sell all the supporting products because then I don't have to hear from you when your pressure washer breaks. And then you'll be largely set up and ready to go to upgrade to a friend. You know, when you're ready. Gosh, I've forgotten how awesome it is. This, you know, my big one on the boom pole turns off after 30 seconds. This one, instant on and off. And the flow, I can feel the difference in the, you know, in the flow that one's 2.8 gallons per minute. This one's 
but it's still, you know, it's got some some oomph to it that, that you don't get from a cheaper pressure washer. And then the com combined with the setup, the swivel, all of the detail, of, you know, my hose never gets bound up because my, my, my thing is swiveling as I'm moving around. It's just, it's such a better experience that's impossible to explain unless, you, unless you've experienced it yourself. So I'm going to clean the tires, go around, do all the wheels of the truck, and uh, I'll come back to you and show you the foam cannon operation, and we'll wrap up this, uh, this, this Krenzla deep dive. All right, wheels are all clean. Let's, uh, let's rinse the truck here. You know, I'm really excited. I, I always forget, every time I use this, I forget how good this thing is, you know, because I'm, I'm so used to my bigger heftier, uh, you know, my on-wall pressure washer. This is just the right amount of pressure. It's just awesome. So I always forget how good this is. I need to do something about the windshield here. It's my my uh, using optimum glass coating is no, give me no more. I think I'm going back to Wolf's, which means I'm gonna have to source Wolf's from overseas. It's interesting. I'm, you know, I'm sitting here washing the truck, and I haven't felt the need to like get out the bigger, you know, the boom pole. Other than dealing with the hose, the user experience of this thing is so good. I always forget that because I'm using the on-wall solution. The amount of pressure we're getting is just right. All right so we got our, our foam cannon filled up. Again, I put 150 mLs of Adam's soap, which is my preferred. And you want to make sure you get it off the bottom. And I put my finger in there, make sure you don't get it stuck. Because these leak, right? They're not watertight. So you know, they're designed to sit upward. So you can see where you can screw this up. If you're, if you're too aggressive with this, you need to make sure you let the bottle, you know, you let it, let the threads do the work rather than forcing it. Otherwise you're gonna jack them up. You know, and you don't wanna torque it too tightly. Because if I turn this upside down, you can, but it starts leaking, right? It leaks out here, it leaks out the thing, it leaks out the front. So you can see what happens. That's common, and you know it's just the way it is. And you know, again, I usually shake it up beforehand, and you, this, you got water all over the place anyway. So let's uh, let's foam the front of the truck here to show you how well this does. So we don't prove me wrong here on how great this is. All right, so we're going to remove our wand, dump the water out, set that aside, quickly connect foam cannon like so. Deal with my hose. And they got some pretty legit foam, right? So the shaking up part is important because if you don't do that, you're gonna suck all the soap off the bottom. You won't have any left. And I'm telling you, there are times, I don't know if it's the uh, barometric pressure or what, <laughs> but sometimes the soap just doesn't foam the same as others. I, mean, I didn't dilute it right or shake it right. Or... So don't panic. But you should generally be getting, you know, foam like so. So you can see I've, I'm not used to dealing with the cord here uh, or the, the hose, uh, but see how see how my, my hose starts to coil up and so then I can just twist. Whereas if I didn't have the swivel, I'd always be flipping this around and so the swivel helps me line everything up. So I use, you know, what, half a bottle worth of, worth of soap. And so our foaming is legit. Right, and this is with Adam's Car Shampoo that isn't a particularly amazing foaming soap. It just does a good job. All right, so I'm gonna wash the truck and uh, we'll come back and wrap up, wrap up the, uh, the deep dive. All right, so here's how I'm gonna finish up you know, using the pressure washer. I'm gonna turn the water off the source here, right? And then I'm gonna take, and I just take the, the, the tip off, and I'm gonna run the water out. 
it won't run it completely out. I don't like to run it for too long just to do that. Notice the pump is running. When there's no water running, then there's no water coming to it and it's not pressurized, it'll, it'll continue to run. Turn it off, disconnect my hoses, and I'm good to go. So it'll pull a good chunk of the water out. All right, let's see how much water's left in our hose here. And so it'll, it'll pull a large percentage of it out. I generally don't put this together when I have it sitting. I don't want it to get all moldy. So I set that aside, take my pump, disconnect my power source, wrap up my power cord. And I'm take my gun off, run any excess water out. I'm gonna generally take my hose and stretch it all the way out, get it nice and straight. And I'll bring this end in so I don't drag it all the way across the the floor. I'm going to wrap it nicely. I'm cheating here because I'm going back to using my big one, but the boom pole with the rinse. But I wanted to show you guys how to break this down. You have a little water dripping. It's okay if it drips on here. Grab my gun and wand. I put it back in place and I'm good to go. And we're finished. All right, so that's a, a relatively deep dive. I can't think of anything I missed uh, on the 1122 TST from uh, Krenzla. Uh, I think that uh, it, this is gonna continue to be difficult to get. I think at times we'll have extra stock, but um, I think as more and more people become aware of how great this thing is and people get to see them in their neighbor's driveways, I think that uh, car guys in general, uh, I think it becomes more and more prevalent, even though it's such an expensive uh, expensive thing. Um, but uh, I'm gonna continue to, to work on improvements for it, whether it's gun or, or, or you know, working on, on, on the pump and working with them to, you know, with all these pressure washers out on the field to make sure that we continue to, to make it even better. But for now, it's about as close to perfect as we can get. So for those of you who are waiting today on June 3rd, 2018, and my guess is those of you who are waiting in the future, because I think they're always going to be uh, difficult to get, uh, I think it's worth the wait. It's worth the, um, worth the effort. It's worth the cost. Anyway, thanks for watching. I know this was a lot of information, but uh, I know the view, those of you who were buying this or thinking about buying this, they want you want more information because that's that's me. So let's say for instance you bought this in in uh, some of you guys have bought this in in early April. I guess yeah mid mid April. So I bought this in early to mid April, and I would want to watch everything there that I could get my hands on to to watch about it while I'm waiting for it. That's part of the fun, and you know, that's part of the part of the. Uh, at least for me, part of the enjoyment. So anyway, thanks for watching this. And uh, if I could ever answer any questions, Matt at ObsessedGarage.com uh, or maybe uh, hopefully in the future, if you're in the neighborhood uh, and uh, when HQ is up and running, you'll be able to come test it out. Thanks for watching. And as always, uh, stay tuned for more crazy. Appreciate it. Force pulls you back, your foot naturally comes off the gas. You have to keep your foot to the floor, the floor, to the floor.